Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. Today we are going to discuss about theory of symbiogenesis. We all know that bacteria lives in a close association with us and without these organisms we will never survive, since they provide us vital nutrients and also protects us from various diseases. However, it is also claimed that these tiny organisms are also fused with our cells and become integral part of our cellular machinery. Today we are going to talk about a theory that holds these claims, the theory of symbiogenesis or endosymbiotic theory. All animals and plants are made up of eukaryotic cells. These cells are the basic unit of structure and function of any living entity. These cells have specialized cell organelles that perform various functions, like mitochondria, which is called powerhouse of the cells because it generates a lot of amount of energy. Endoplasmic reticulum is called protein synthesis machinery of the cell. Golgi bodies are the transportation system and the nucleus is the brain of the cell because it contains all the genetic information. Researchers believe that these organelles are originated because of prokaryotic cells fused with eukaryotic cells and became integral part of the eukaryotic cell. There are interesting proofs that are provided in support of this hypothesis. We are going to discuss those evidences in detail, so please stay tuned to understand the theory of symbiogenesis. It holds that the organelles distinguishing eukaryotic cells evolve through symbiosis of individual single-cell prokaryotes, bacteria or archaea. The theory holds that mitochondria, plastids such as chloroplast and possibly other organelles of eukaryotic cells represents formerly free living prokaryotes taken one inside the other in endosymbiosis. There are some evidences in favor of this hypothesis. For example, some mitochondria and plastids contain single circular DNA molecule similar to the chromosome of bacteria. New mitochondria and plastids are formed only through binary fission, the form of cell division used by bacteria and archaea. If a cell's mitochondria or chloroplasts are removed, the cell does not have the mean to create new ones. For example, in some algae such as euglena, the plastids can be destroyed by certain chemicals or prolonged absence of light, without otherwise affecting the cell. In such a case, the plastid will not regenerate. Transport proteins called porins are found in the outer membranes of mitochondria and chloroplasts and these are also found in the bacterial cell membranes. A membrane lipid called cardiolipin is exclusively found in the inner mitochondrial membrane and bacterial cell membranes. Genome comparison suggests a close relationship between mitochondria and rickettsial bacteria. Genome comparison also suggests a close relationship between plastids and cyanobacteria. Many genes in the genome of mitochondria and chloroplasts have been lost or transferred to the nucleus of the host cell. Consequently, the chromosomes of many eukaryotes contain genes that originated from the genomes of mitochondria and chloroplasts. Mitochondrial and plastid ribosomes are more similar to those of bacterial 70S ribosomes than eukaryotic ribosomes. Proteins created by mitochondria and chloroplasts use n formyl methionine as the initiating amino acid, as do proteins created by bacteria, but not proteins created by eukaryotic nuclear genes. These were the key evidences proposed in favor of theory of symbiogenesis. All these evidences support that the eukaryotic cells were created by the fusion of bacterial cells and they live inside the eukaryotic cell in a symbiotic relationship. I hope now you understand the theory of symbiogenesis. Please subscribe the Basic Science channel for new videos. Thank you and Namaste.